Both of my socks fell halfway off my feet on the way out to the car this morning and I have schoolhouse rocks. I'm just a bill stuck in my head. It's gonna be a great Monday. Good morning, everybody. My name is Brittany and I am a second grade teacher in Utah. Welcome if you're new to the channel. And to those of you who have been here a while, sorry, it's been so long. There's just pretty average things going on and I don't have that much expertise that I need to show my day-to-day -day stuff. So I'm back. It's a Monday. It's a week six of our Wonders curriculum, our language arts curriculum, which means we don't have new concepts this week, but instead we do a lot of review and a lot of extra things. Now, last time we had a week six, we actually did science all week because I was testing out our new science standards that we're going to be doing next year. And this week we're doing bingo week, which is something I came up with last year as a way to really target high frequency words and review some concepts. So we're going to do bingo week this week, and we're also going to do a poetry slam. Um, I give my students a ton of poems. They pick one, we memorize it, and then we share it together on Friday. It's just good for fluency practice. So I will show you a couple of things with both bingo week and the poetry slam. But before I do that, this story has been long in the making, as in I needed to have shared it for a really long time. So I'm going to share it with you now. Okay, story time. I'm even sitting in my story time chair, so this is legit. Remember way back in the way back how kids used to put tacks on their teachers' chairs? That was like a thing, okay? Not when I was in school, probably not when any of you were in school. I don't know, maybe. It was like a way back in the way back thing. Teachers don't really use tacks anymore, and apparently kids aren't physically malicious. They do more emotional damage than physical a lot of the time, such is my life. Well, the other day as in a couple weeks ago, a student approached me and told me that someone was going to put a thorn on my chair. I was like, okay, whatever, oh, sure, and thought nothing of it. And the next morning, we're sitting back here doing the calendar, so I'm reading them in the calendar and things are going well. And literal, this is a replay of exactly what happened. I was sitting here, leaving them in the calendar, and I turn, I was like, ow, what the heck? And so I like wipe my leg and out comes this gem a legitimate thorn on my chair that I sat on a kid put a thorn on my chair for me to sit on and then I saved that thorn for a couple of weeks so I could tell you the story oh my goodness <laughs> yay for teaching guys these are the fun things we get to deal with the best part is that the kid wasn't even trying to be like mean or cruel or anything. He didn't even notice when I sat on the thorn. He just found it on the ground and put it on my chair. Where, where do kids get these things from? I don't know. I'm about to make a major decision. I'm going to go print our little centers cards for guided reading for the entire rest of the year. Which means I can't change guided reading for the rest of the year. And if you know me, historically I change it about 76 times before the end of the year. So this is kind of stressing me out a little bit. I think I'm gonna commit, guys. This is me taking the copies down. All right, the kids are out at recess, so we have a quick second to chat about Bingo Week. I believe that I did explain this last year, so if you wanna go back and watch that from last year, you totally can. If I didn't, sorry, you're just gonna get a synopsis because I don't really want to explain the whole thing. Welcome to my life. So for Bingo Week, um, basically it is a review week. So what I do is focus on high frequency words for the week. So each kid gets a folder with their number on it and inside they have a high frequency word list. I get them from the fry phrase or fry word list and a bingo activity sheet. And the activity sheets have changed every time I've done bingo week for this time. There's a concept review from the language arts concepts we've been working on. And then there's also a page with like activities that they can use to practice their high frequency list. The way I'm doing it this time around is that for every activity box they pass off, they get one point. And for every time they pass off a list to me, they read through the whole list 100%, they get two points. And then every time they collect three points, they can put their name up on the bingo board. Bingo boards work like wow boards or boards like that that teachers use for incentives where you like 
put your name on the board as many times as you want and then at the end you do a drawing and whoever's name is in that space gets a prize. So let me show you really fast just the list and the activity boards. So this is what the little activity boards look like. I just made up some things that they can do. Most of them are things like read your list hanging upside down, tape your paper to your dress like Michelangelo, just found a bunch of random things. And then they work through their um, fry word list. So the way that I call them back is, this is my bingo bucket right now, like so. So I have this binder and inside I have all the lists and then let me just cover up their names really fast. I have a little sheet that looks like this with their names on it and the number of the lists. So I'll just check off when they pass it or put a little uh, tiny little mark right there if they need to do it again so I can see how many times they tried before they passed it off. So what I'll do is I'll just call, I'll just call five or six kids back at a time and give them all a chance to show me the work that they've done. So they'll bring their folder back and show me any activities that they've completed. If it had paper that went with it, like some of them are like write your list in different colors or things like that, then they show me that paper. Um, I'll just put a little green dot on it to show that they got points for that one already and then they have a chance to read their list to me. If they can read 100% correct, they get two points for that. And then if they've collected three points or more than three points, then they can put their name on the board for every three points they collect. I hope that made any semblance of sense. In my mind it did, but that's because I just spent 20 minutes explaining it to a group of kids, and so that sounded beautiful to me. But if it doesn't make sense to you, I apologize. You can comment and let me know if you really are dying to know how to do Bingo Week. It's a lot of fun for the kids because they spend most of the time standing around doing these activities independently. And it gives me a chance to call kids back and listen to them read sight words independently just to kind of get an idea of where they're at and how quickly they can move through sight words. So I like it just because it's nice and simple. We're going to do bingo week for about 30 minutes each morning this week. Um, I haven't decided yet because I haven't had anybody finish it, but I think if they finish one of these sheets, I might just print them off a second one and let them do all these activities again because every time they pass off a list, I'm giving them the next one up. So they won't have done all those activities for the same list yet anyway, but anyway, that's a possibility. For the rest of the day is pretty normal. We're going to do, we just finished our reading workshop, went really well, and then when they get back, we're going to work on some writing. We're doing some writing about animals, which animal would survive. Um, we'll get on the Chromebooks for a while, go out to recess. After recess, instead of math today, we're going to choose our poems for Poetry Slam, so any easy day. I really was hoping that I would get some quality reactions from kids because my hair is different today and I tried to film them for you but they had no reaction and that is the first time I have not had kids say ridiculous things that would like really hurt someone if it ever came from anyone other than a small child. They didn't say anything. In fact a lot of them were like oh I bet you her hair is naturally curly. My mom's is like that too. I was like that's the nicest people I've ever been. Maybe I'll wear my hair like this more often. So I tried so you could get a taste of what it's like when you change your appearance slightly for children who depend on your appearance to be the same, but they didn't care today. So I guess you don't get to know what that's like. Sorry. I did forget one other thing for bingo week and that is because I'm back there helping kids pass off their lists, I cannot be answering questions or telling them what the words are if they maybe don't know one of the sight words. So I just choose like four of my highest readers and give them this little star to tape onto themselves that says, I'm a word wizard, ask me. And that way if they have a question, a comment, or a concern, they can go ask them and they don't bug me at the back table when it is not their turn. Honest to goodness, things ran pretty smoothly. It was their first day trying it. This was a little rough, you know, but overall, things were good. So we made it through the day. We picked out our poems for the Poetry Slam and then I, with incredible speed, managed to put all of their poems onto papers, as many copies as I needed, and print the whole thing off and cut them out and give them to the kids. It was a bit of a chaotic afternoon. Um, Mondays are early out days, so now I'm just getting some work done for the week. And apparently what I have decided that is important for me to do while I'm here is get my calendar ready for next year, next year, next month, the one that hangs on my wall and tells me what big events are coming up. And I've decided that it is essential to decorate the calendar. I'm putting a garland on for the 12 days of Christmas that the PTA does for us. I mean, it's gonna be hanging on my wall for a month. It's kind of important that it looks cute, right? 
more important than getting everything ready for next week or even cleaning up the mess that's in my room right now. It's like a mental health thing, pretty sure. This is evidence that I can no longer change my mind about guided reading. I have a year's worth of guided reading cards now. Alrighty, well we are back in the car and good news, both of my socks are on my feet this time. So that means today actually ended up being pretty good. Thanks again for um, listening in, tuning in, accompanying me. I don't even really know how to describe what you're doing. But thanks. And uh, don't forget to subscribe so you can join me again later. That's all I got for you today. Since the car alarms are going off and I need to go grocery shopping, I am going to head out. See ya. Thank you.